This is the motto of the show, Hour of the Truth. Rome never changes. They used to call us heretics and sent the Inquisition to kill us. Today they call us terrorists and send on their crusades. Times and methods may have changed, the goal still stays the same. Extirpate the remnant of the true word of God, Bible-believing people. Suffering at the hands of Rome Cause they believed in Christ alone They died through Europe, especially Spain For they saw all but Christ is vain He suffered by His death for men To save them from their awful sin Six hundred years of martyred saints that history cannot erase with iron heel and iron hand the Roman popes rule the land those ignorant of history may be swept into apostasy we won't be loved by Rome, sweet lie with fifty million reasons why salvation is by faith alone in christ alone by grace alone a sovereign god give faith to man salvation's in the maker's hand this gospel offends rome today they offer up Another way, a counterfeit, a compromise Beware the ancient papal lie With such a cloud of witnesses Who by grace died in their Lord Recall their memory to say By the same faith we live today Hello and welcome everybody to a new video from York Juggler 66 Hour of the Truth, the next, already the 64th episode of Hour of the Truth today and again like the previous one with the same guests, Brett uh, Norman from the United States of America, Michael from my brother from Germany and again our researcher and author from the United States of America, if I'm not mistaken, Pennsylvania if I remember correctly, Daryl Eberhardt who is our guest today here. And um, yeah, we are gathered here together on Sunday the 25th of November to have another meeting and to talk about uh, things of the past, things of the future and everything related to the Bible, which is most important of all. So I'm going to give the mic up to uh, yeah, Michael and Daryl. Hello guys and brothers, welcome to the broadcast today and Brett will join us later when he has done his business. So. Come on. <laughs> That's how you say that, right? So <laughs> That's correct. That's a good way of putting it in American English. In American taking English. care of business. Yeah. So, how you been? Very good for an old guy who's 71 years old. And I didn't mention last time, but I did have a major stroke a little over a year ago that totally paralyzed me on the right side. So, praise the Lord. Uh, I was basically, I, I'm right-handed, and I couldn't use my right arm and hand and my right leg uh, uh, after that stroke for, well, probably over a month, month and a half before I could even barely move the fingers and uh, the toes. So I am very, very blessed and lucky to be able to walk, to talk. I did, with my stroke, I didn't lose speech. I didn't get the dripping in, or drooping in the face, so... Uh, the problem that I did have was uh, pretty much total paralyzation on my right side. And for a right-handed guy, you don't want to be paralyzed on your right side because it makes things a lot more difficult. But again, I'm, I'm blessed and lucky that I can, uh, can talk and that I can walk. And yeah. so I'm able to get around. Tom told me about that stroke that you had. Yeah. 
and you know 71 years you never know how much more years you have or how much days i mean uh, i'm just 52 and i don't know how many more days i have but actually i don't care when the days here are gone <laughs> the lord will take me you know i will fall asleep and i will be there in the resurrection which for me is the most important part of this life anyway because Amen. And the and life the life of a christian here on earth daryl is nothing else but a struggle that ends with death and then That's it continues sure. and then starts the real life when we see our Lord, how he really is, right? Right. And I do have a 70% blockage on my carotid artery. That's the main, one of the main arteries. You got them on both sides, I think, of your neck mm -hmm. that run up to your brain. So I've got a 70% blockage. And again, like Yerk just said, we never know if we have another day, whether we're even 20 years old, uh, here in America, they just seem to have so many automobile accidents. We have a lot of drunk driving in America, and so you have people, you can pick up the obituary and read about a 20-year-old, an 18-year-old who just graduated from high school being killed in a motor uh, automobile accident where drink, drunk driving is involved. And that is a major problem that we have in America besides the drugs like big time. And, of course, you have that problem also in Europe. So I would urge all the listeners, live, live every day, no matter what your age, as if it's your last day. And I think you guys would agree with that, is that we need to, we, as the, the Bible says, and I think it's uh, Matthew 6.33, or 33.6, excuse me, uh, says, uh, but but seek ye first the kingdom of God. I might have those numbers backwards. Might be thirty three six or six thirty three. Do you guys know for sure? But anyway, it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we need to seek God's kingdom first, and His righteousness means right doing. We need to be doing what's right, and to know how to do that, we need to study the Bible, and if I can say real quickly, the two most important things in life, I believe, and I think you guys probably agree with me, number one is Bible study, Old and New Testament. We don't have two Bibles, we got one Bible. So it's important every word of God, as the Lord Jesus Christ, I think, says in Luke 4.4, 4, but it's every word of God. Man's to live by, not by bread alone, but by every Word of God. So Bible study and prayer, I would think, would be the two most important things in our life. Do you guys agree? Do you think Absolutely. those are the two I, top? I think that is in Matthew way he says that when he is tempted by the devil and the devil says, if you are the son of God, then make that all these stones become bread. And Jesus answers, uh, it is written, uh, you, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And, and I believe he was quoting the Old Testament there. I think that's in Deuteronomy. That's what Jesus, that can, that's what Jesus does a lot. And, uh, you know, the very important thing about this, Daryl, is something that we could, should also talk one time. Um, everything that Jesus does in his ministry when he is here on earth with his three and a half years, the completion in the flesh of the 70th week of Daniel, um, everything that he says here, everything that he does here, has been prophesied. It has been prophesied by the prophets of Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. I don't know all the prophets because I haven't read all the Bible, but I know that, for example, Isaiah 53 is the quote-unquote forgotten chapter. That if you tell that to Jews, they just slam their head. Uh, they cannot mm -hmm. believe that they have missed that all that time in their study. And uh, Jesus Christ fulfills the 70th week of Daniel completely, meaning the Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. And throughout his ministry in the flesh, meaning the gospel between uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, you can find that. And you can find the fulfilling of the 70th week of Daniel, and you can find the fulfilling of all the prophecies of the quote-unquote Old Testament, which I like to prefer to call uh, the Law and the Prophets. Uh, how he fulfills that in word and in deed, day over, uh, every every day until he goes to the cross. And then afterwards, of course, with the resurrection three days later, and his going to heaven and sitting next to the Father on the throne in heaven ever, ever since. And uh, together with his Father, Father sending the Holy Spirit to guide us and to be with us until the end of time, until he comes back. 
And an important thing for all of us to remember is, is that the New Testament was not written 10 minutes after Jesus ascended back to heaven. The New Testament, it took uh, some, a couple decades for it to be put together because Paul was writing his various epistles to the Ephesians, Galatians, etc., the Thessalonians, the Corinthians. Um, what the, the, the initially, uh, be, uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ went back to heaven, what uh, all of the uh, disciples, the first Christians, uh, were quoting was the Old Testament. They were pointing out from the Old Testament, as you mentioned, Jerk, is all of these prophecies, that Old Testament prophecies that were fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ when he came back. And I, I don't know the exact number, but there's dozens and dozens and dozens of prophetic um, qualifications that the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled when he came, proving without any doubt that he was the promised Messiah, that was going to come, the Anointed One. And that's why it's critical for us to study also the Old Testament. No, we're not under the law, we're under grace, we understand that. But uh, some of my favorite books in the Bible are Jeremiah, Isaiah, they're in the Old Testament. And uh, um, uh, what they call the Minor Prophets and that, uh, there's just a lot of good, the, the book of Daniel, of course, uh, has a great prophetic relevance for the end times here. So the book of Daniel goes uh, hand in glove, as we say, uh, with the book of Revelation. And the Bible's very understandable. Yeah, the, it interprets itself. Go ahead. The book, the book of Daniel, the prophecies of the Apostle Paul, and the prophecies of the Apostle John. They make very, very sure that you understand every word of the Bible. Those are the, the, those are the most important books that you should ever read. And Henry Gretton Guinness and his wonderful work, Romanism and the Reformation, that he put out in 1888, is a wonderful example of, a, of an author, a Protestant author of the 19th century, understood that fully, and who built his 400 pages book and his three lectures that he held in extra hall in the end of the 19th century there, um, proving by the books of Daniel, by the prophecy, by the uh, by the teachings of Paul, and by the teachings of John, especially in Revelation, that the papacy is, was, and always will be the Antichrist of the Bible. And, and that's the uh, one point. That's the one point that you mentioned yesterday already. I, I think it was, or it was in the in uh, in, the, in the broadcast you did with Brett a few days ago. Um, that is the one point where all reformers, all, all quote-unquote reformers, whoever they were, agreed on. They may have differences in kind of Bible explanation, in quote-unquote exegesis, or whatever it is, but uh, in one point they all agreed, from Martin Luther over Wycliffe and Tyndale to Calvin and Latimer and Mortimer and... You know, all these wonderful guys in uh, in England and here on the continent, Jan Hus and all these guys who were busy uh, keeping themselves busy with the Word of God and bringing the Word of God among the people, they all agreed on this one vital point. It is the office of the papacy that is, was and always will be the biblical, prophetic and, uh, and um, historic Antichrist. And that's that's a, a wonderful and, and important point. And you were just mentioning the prophecies. I think uh, there are not only tens. I think there are even hundreds of them in the uh, yeah. law and the prophets, which point to Jesus Christ. And you know, the the most important uh, one of the absolutely most important one, I think, is the very first one, and that is Genesis chapter three, verse fifteen. where God says, "I will put enmity between your seed and her seed." He will yeah. bruise your heel, and you will bru uh, He will uh, bruise your heel, uh, bruise your head, and you will bruise his heel. Huh? This is the very yeah. first time that uh, that the second seed, that the two seeds are mentioned. You have the seed of the devil, you have the mind of the devil, and you have the mind of Jesus Christ. You have the church, uh, and uh, what is happening, and who is going to win? It is prophesied right there, Genesis three, verse fifteen. And you brought something up very important, and that is is that there were a, a lot of different reformers, and of course most of us who have studied church, quote, real church history, we're familiar with people like John Calvin and Martin Luther 
And again, as, as Yerk pointed out, they may not have agreed on every single point of doctrine, and they certainly didn't. But there was one thing that they all agreed upon, and not only the Reformers, the quote, Protestant Reformers, but it wasn't just them. It was the Puritans, it was the uh, Albigensian Christians, the Waldensian Christians, and many of these people go way back. But all of these Christians were unanimous in, by studying the Scripture, coming up with the identity of the Antichrist. And they were, to a man, they identified the Antichrist as the office of the papacy, the popes that came along. And it wasn't, uh, again, it wasn't just uh, the Protestant reformers. It was quite a few people. There were a lot of different Puritan scholars and that. And these were they all brought out in a wonderful two-book uh, set, volume book set that was put out by Ronald, Dr. Ronald N. Cook. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I've got it right here. It's Antichrist Exposed, Volume 1 and 2. And I realize most people aren't going to buy big books. Did, didn't it, he, it, sorry to interrupt you, but didn't he also uh, author the book uh, Don't Dare Call It Conspiracy? I'm not sure of that. I know I have a whole bunch of his booklets, and uh, but he put out a two-volume set, and I mean, like you're talking about, when you put the two of them together, it's over 600 pages, mm -hmm. called Antichrist Exposed, the Reformed and Puritan View of the Antichrist. And again, he just has quotation after quotation after quotation of a lot of scholars that went back before, even before the time of the Reformers. But he's got a lot of quotations by not just the Protestant Reformers, but he's got quotations, again, by these Puritan scholars and uh, others that came along. And um, they, like I said, they didn't agree on everything, but they certainly agreed on who the Antichrist was. And I think if Anyone does an honest um, study of the the book of Daniel uh, and the and Revelation, especially uh, when they view those, and especially like chapters thirteen through about eighteen in the Revelation, uh, there's no one else that that it can point to uh, than the papacy. And I love uh, I've got uh, I've got some quotations here, and let's see if I can find. Uh, the one uh, Richard Bennett came up with a great quotation about the Antichrist, and I've got, of course, I've got a whole bunch of them here that, that we can go to. I thought some of these ones, like by like Martin Luther, we, are, we here are of the conviction that the papacy is the seat of the true and real Antichrist. I mean, they were right to the point. They nailed it down. Martin Luther uh, also said it's a horrible thing to behold the man. He's talking about the Pope who styles himself Christ vicegerent, his vicar, displaying a magnificence that no emperor can equal. Is this being like the poor Jesus or the humble Peter? He is, say they, the Lord of the world, but Christ, whose vicar he boasts of being, said, my kingdom is not of this world. Can the dominions of a vicar extend beyond those of his superior? So we just have, and of course there was an American clergyman here, Cotton I don't know whether it's Mather or Mather, he lived 1663 to 1728. He said, the oracles of God foretold the rising of an Antichrist in the Christian Church. And in the Pope of Rome, all the characteristics of that Antichrist are so marvelously answered that if any who read the Scriptures do not see it, I love this quote, there is a marvelous blindness upon them. And boy, I'll tell you, you know as well as I do that a lot of so-called Christians in Europe, in the United States of America, they've got no clue as to who the Antichrist is. Uh, you and I, uh, York, exchanged some emails talking about a, a pastor here in the United States that I've sent a number of emails, I've sent uh, a number of my uh, articles to, and to this day he still he's still not uh, recognizing who the Antichrist is. Mm -hmm. uh, Ian Pace, go ahead. Yeah, um, I think one of the verses, uh, one of the few verses that absolutely nail without any, uh, any question left or who the Antichrist is, we can read in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, 
only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And the problem is, Daryl, and you know that better than I do, in all these corrupt churches that we have today, they teach that he who now letteth is the Holy Spirit. And they teach that the Holy Spirit has to be taken out of the way before the Antichrist is going to be revealed. But what, pa what Paul, of course, speaks about here to the Thessalonians is what he says already in verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. He was speaking to them more explicitly when he visited them in s in instead of this letter that he sent afterwards. Because, you know, when you, set a letter, when you send a letter and that's being... Um, <coughs> that is being caught by uh, the uh, by the authorities in the time, and there you write in. Well, <laughs> when the Caesar is gone, somebody else will come. You are probably being picked up uh, because of sedition or something like that. So of course he was very careful, especially in the Bible when he wrote this letter. He said, "He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way." And who was letting? Who was reigning in the time when Paul said this to the Thessalonians, the Caesars? So he said explicitly, yep. when the Caesars are taken out of the way, then that mystery of iniquity will come. Pa uh, verse 8, Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. But many, many, many years later, he will only do that. And there we have an absolute, in my understanding at least, perfect explanation of who the Antichrist is that wicked be revealed, that son of perdition, that man of sin, is the one who replaces the Caesars. So when Rome fell at the end of the 5th century, out of the ten horns of Daniel's prophecy in chapter 7, a little horn arose, the smallest of all kingdoms over here in Europe. Which one is that? Well, the Vatican, is it, is it, the little horn. Yes. Yeah? And that little horn grew and grew and grew until in the, at the end of the 6th century and the beginning of the 7th century by uh, Bishop Gregory. Of course, the Roman Catholic Church calls him Pope, but he was just a bishop. And he warned in letters that he wrote to the Emperor uh, Morris, um, uh, Mauritius and, and Phocas, uh, to Mauritius, he warned that when... Um, the bishop will call himself universal bishop. He is the predecessor of Antichrist. And after he finished his letters and um, he was done with his office, he was replaced by the bishop Boniface III, if I'm not mistaken. And he was given the power over the Western and the Eastern Church by the successor of Emperor Mor uh, Morris. Or what, what was his name? Uh, I, I don't know. Mauritius is in Germany. I, I, I forgot now his name in English. And um, that emperor was Phocas, who killed his predecessor and his whole family and everything. And this Phocas gave power to the bishop of Rome, Boniface III, and he was the first one to call himself the universal bishop, who was himself to call the Pontifex Maximus, and by that he was the first pope. And we can read this in workings of Martin Luther in his book, against the Roman papacy, an institution by the devil. We can read that in Romanism and the Reformation by Henry Gretton Guinness. And we read the same thing in Alexander Hislop's wonderful work, The Two Babylons, which he published in 1853 through 1858, where he absolutely makes the point that Rome has its roots in Babylon and nowhere else. And I'm quite sure that you know that book too. And I read that book on my channel in German. I read a smaller book with the same content from Ralph Woodrow that he uh, pinned down in 1966 and then later retracted from it, but um, that's only because he got caught by, uh, by the wrong spirit. He wrote the book Babylon Mystery Religion. I read that on my channel too. And in Alexander okay. Hislop's book, The Two Babylons and Romanism and the Reformation by Henry Gretton Guinness and in Martin Luther's work and it's, uh, Against the Roman Papacy, an Institution by the Devil, a book that he wrote, by the way, in 15, uh, published in 1545 and he published it on the same day when the Council of Trent was opening in the beginning of March. Very interesting. Yeah? Jaw-dropper. <laughs> yeah, Martin Luther points <laughs> that me. out 
and uh, and uh, with that he he points to the beginning of the 1260 prophetic year uh, day year reign of the antichrist from 606 to 1866 any thoughts on that daryl right i want um wanted to say that uh, one of the things that i think is a is a really good statement is that the the Pope of Rome basically moved into the power vacuum that was created when the pagan Roman Caesars quit ruling. And basically, he took over the Latin side of the empire. And of course, he had the Bi Byzantine on the other side. But uh, even with all of the hordes of uh, what they called pagans and vandals and all these people coming in, is that that the Pope of Rome, the religious leader, the Bishop of Rome, moved into that power vacuum, and he basically took over the, the, the papal Caesar, took over for where you used to have the pagan Caesars. So he took over for that. And uh, you had mentioned about uh, all of the Reformers uh, agreeing on who the Antichrist was. There's a tremendous quote by Michael de Semlian. I've got it right in front of me. It's a short quote. In his book, All Roads to Lead, All Roads Lead to Rome. Yeah, question I read that mark. book on my channel, by the way. If you don't know that yet, right? The Ecumenical Movement is the subtitle. Here's what he and I'm going to put their first names in for a lot of them. But John Wycliffe, William Tyndale, Martin Luther, John Calvin, Thomas Cranmer, by who way, by the way, was burned at the stake in the 17th century. John Bunyan, the translators of the King James Bible and the men who published the Westminster and Baptist Confessions of Faith, Sir Isaac Newton, John Wesley, George Whitefield or Whitfield, some people say, Jonathan Edwards, and more recently, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, Bishop J.C. Rowell, and Martin Lloyd-Jones. These men, among countless others, all saw the office of the papacy as the Antichrist. So like you had said, Yerk, despite the fact that they didn't agree on every theological issue, every point of doctrine, there's one thing that they all, all the Protestant reformers agreed upon, and that was that the Antichrist fulfilled all of the prophecies in the Bible concerning the man of sin, the son of perdition, the whore of of har and harlot slash of the papacy, revelation that the papacy yes, fulfills it all was that. the yeah. papacy and that the 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 Roman Catholic religious system fulfilled all of the p vivid pictures that were painted in the Bible of concerning that harlot or that whore of and I hate to use those words but that's what we have the the religious system pictured as so yes they identified the office of the Pope as the Antichrist, and they discovered, and they pointed out that the Bible very clearly describes a religious harlot or whore, and they pointed that out to be the Roman Catholic religious system. And they were all in agreement about that. Did you have anything you wanted to add to that, or... No, to that, not uh, not actually right now. No, I don't. I only thought that yesterday we thought we were going to speak a little about, if you are willing, uh, uh, when that fits your agenda, a little bit about um, the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and uh, maybe later go into the assassination of John F. Kennedy, uh, two things that were not made possible, wasn't it for the sinister workings of the Jesuit order, you know, that... Um, that Roman Catholic knighthood that was endorsed by Pope Paul III in 1540 after it was founded in 1534 by Ignatius Loyola, uh, a Spanish Basque, and by the way, not a Jew. <laughs> I have a, I have a video where it is absolutely um, put into a lie that uh, Loyola was a converted Jew or a Morano Jew or crypto Jew whatever how they're going to call it. They, they always like to put the Jews in front, especially the people who don't study the Bible. And um, I think that's a very important point that we could make here, Darrow. Um, we, we both, uh, we all here on the call are very much aware of Bible prophecy and especially the Bible prophecies, of course, also of the book of Daniel. Uh, let us just go into, and, and then I can, uh, can put up a picture here of that, 
um, in the video as I'm recording it uh, for the moment right now in Daniel chapter 2 um, Daniel speaks of a figure of a metal man when he explains the dream that uh, the king of Babylon Nebuchadnezzar had he couldn't remember the dream and he didn't understand what the dream was all about and to make a long story short he tells the king that um, Babylon is the head of gold the upcoming um, kingdom that replaces Babylon the Medo-Persians is the breast and arms of silver the then replacing kingdom of that will be the Grecian Empire that is the thighs of brass that he saw and eventually you have the legs of iron and the feet uh, iron mixed with miry clay as the Roman Empire so Daniel speaks of at that time when the Jews were in Babylonian captivity for kingdoms that rule the world speaking of um, of course pagan kingdoms yeah because Cain was given the power to rule yeah so you have here this four kingdoms and he doesn't speak of a fifth kingdom he doesn't speak of a rule of the Jews yeah so anybody who at least tries to understand biblical prophecy can see that the Jews don't rule anything but it is always Rome but Rome uses of course as the figures they want who they want to and they use Jews and they use every kind of nation and every kind of quote-unquote human race if you want to call it that um, who serves their purpose yeah anyone who play who who pays their allegiance to the Pope of Rome they use and put out in front and therefore they give you women and fame and money and everything you want and power as long as you are willing to sell your soul to the devil yeah then Rome yeah, will impute you with power. And, Yerk, you did such a great job reading uh, a document that, or an article that I had written uh, years ago. It's called It's Simply Amazing. That's up on YouTube on that you did where you read that, and I thought you did such a great job of reading that, where I pointed out in that article how through for centuries, for centuries, the Roman Catholic Church has blamed the Jews for just about everything, including aspiring to rule the world when it's the Jesuit-controlled papal Rome that's always uh, aspired and still does uh, to the rule the world. Before we get into uh, uh, Lincoln and uh, JFK, can I just read uh, just a, it's a medium-sized quote, but it's such a, be a good quote about the Antichrist by Richard Bennett. And he's 80 years old. He may not be with us too much longer. God, let's hope that God gives him some additional time. But he's got, he says, now the, and I'm going to add a few little things with it, but now the Bible believers, and he's talking about the old Bible believers, the Albigensian Christians, Waldensian Christians, saw these things, and they saw that it was historically true, meaning that the papacy had fulfilled these Bible prophecies, as Yerk mentioned, from in Daniel and also in Revelation, uh, unlike many Bible believers of boss, our yeah. own day who say they do not know who the Antichrist is, and they are looking for something to come in future times whereby they will get implanted with a computer chip or something in their brain or some other of these wild ideas that go around, whereby in the pages of Scripture we see these things prophesied. And he's talking about the Antichrist and the Horror of Revelation. And Richard says, and we see them fulfilled in the papacy, understood. And in those days, of, he means in previous centuries, Roman Catholic cardinals wore scarlet and the bishops wore purple. And, and what they don't very... wear is blue, Daryl. What they don't wear <laughs> is blue, and that's another color given, ordained by God in the book of Numbers to the Levites, to the real church. And that's the color they don't wear. Right. And, and he says, to this day, the Catholic Church still boasts these same two colors, and he means scarlet and purple for her higher-level prelates. These are the real colors of Rome. He means papal Rome, and this is what was prophesied of her. And that's only one of the, and he means prophesied details. She, papal Rome, holds the golden cup in her hands. She's the only system that has drunk the blood of the saints over such a long period of time. And, of course, the Inquisition, as we know, went over six centuries, the formal time of it. This is fact. 
Richard says. It's not something that is surmised. This can be verified on the pages of history. And that's Richard Bennett. He's a former Roman Catholic priest of 22 years. He was a Dominican, and that's from his DVD, which is now up there on YouTube, is The Inquisition, 605 years of papal torture and death. And uh, I think that's quite a, a telling quote there. But that we had the earlier quote by Michael de Semlian, and then this one by Richard Bennett pointing out uh, all of the different people in the past who have come out and identified papal Rome, again, as being the religious system and the office of the Pope being the Antichrist. So uh, many people risked their lives. Some, like Tyndale and uh, others, gave their lives. Uh, we mentioned some of those uh, yester yesterday's uh, broadcast or program. Uh, and the, uh, Nicholas uh, Ridley and Hugh Latimer, there were just a lot of people burned at the stake simply because they believed that the office of the papacy was the Antichrist. How many people die for a lie? Not too many people. And when people risk their lives to, to, to say that transubstantiation is wrong, that, uh, that the, the pope is the office of the pope is the antichrist when they risk their lives and or give their lives for truth well then something needs to, we need to pay attention and sit up and pay attention to that but uh, i just thought those were some some really good quotes and we need to remember that uh, again it wasn't just the protestant reformers it was many men and women gave their lives that went before in, in pointing out that the papacy, the office of the Pope, was the Antichrist, and the religious system itself was the harlot, the horror of revelation that's described there. So do you guys kind of totally agree with that before we get into the uh, Lincoln and uh, Kennedy? Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, um, you may have noticed, because you were mentioning that video from Richard Bennett about the Inquisition, uh, then you maybe know that in the beginning of that video he plays that Inquisition song, and that and you have that. and that mm -hmm. Inquisition song is the starting melody to all my videos I do on Hour of the Truth videos, and I put the text right in there that everybody who listens to this can also read the text and understand what it's all about. I mean, it's not a hard text to understand, but it calls into recollection every time when you see that that at least these 605 years of official Inquisition persecution, the Roman Catholic Church is responsible for killing at least, if not many, many more, 50 million people all over the known world in that time. And there are different numbers out there, uh, numbers of 50 million, even up to 500 million, you know, only God knows the number. But I tell you, everyone every single one life that the Roman Catholic Church takes only because they persecute people because of their belief is one life too many and God will recompense in the day of his coming and of his and judgment Amen to that and, and you're right the credible historians place that number the minimum the minimum number is 50 million and like you said, it's probably much more than that. And when you start, as we mentioned, I believe, uh, yesterday, when you add to that 66 million people paid their lives in World War II and the Jesuits and Jesuit-controlled papal Rome fomented both World War I and World War II, which is brought out very well in Edmund, French author Edmund Paris's book, The Secret History of the Jesuits, the secret history of the Jesuits. He makes a pretty much an ironclad, if he was a lawyer, case that papal Rome, Jesuit-controlled papal Rome, fomented both World War One and World War Two. And I believe the numbers minimum is 66 million. I've read people's uh, lost their lives in that war. So that's something that we need to sit up and pay attention to and that's why i'm very very thankful to god and and that's one of the things we can do besides our bible study and prayer is we can promote good books and they can order that book through chick publications and then go up on the internet chick.com chick.com like a small chicken or something chick.com 
or you know they can call chick publications and they can look that number up but the thing is is that they can read that book by edmund paris and and i highly recommend that they take a look at the materials that are offered by chick publications because chick has a lot of great books about roman catholic doctrine about roman catholic history like the secret history of the jesuits they've got about uh, 50 Years in the Church of Rome by Charles Chinicky that's going to tell about the, the very close relationship, friendship, that Charles Chinicky and Abraham Lincoln had, and they can read a lot about the assassination of Lincoln. Charles Chinicky really covers that quite well in his book, 50 Years in the Church of Rome. And so there's just a, a lot of books by David W. Daniels, like Did the Catholic Church Give Us the Bible, that you read, uh, Yerk, that there's a lot of good materials there that they can read and of course these books are illustrated the mystery babylon uh and also uh, that david w daniels did babylon mystery religion or something like that but uh and uh, did the catholic church give us the bible so they're easy reads but i would recommend that people take advantage of chick publications and the the mm -hmm. tremendous materials that uh, they have available they also have books on islam they have books on Mormonism. They have books about Freemasonry. So Chick Publications is a, a real treasure trove of, of good materials that uh, people can take a look at. And, of course, make sure that you tell people about YouTube, The Hour of Truth with Yerk Glissman, and also Inquisition Update with Tom Fress and Brett Norman. Let folks know about these people and and their YouTube channels and that, and so that they can go up and pick up a lot of this information because between uh, uh, Yerk and Tom Fress and Brett Norman and that, they're putting a lot of great material that you don't have to go buy the book. You can hear it read, and you can hear it with uh, good commentary and that. So you guys, all of you, are doing a great job. You are doing a great job, and I, I commend you for it. Yeah, that book that you just mentioned, The Secret History of the Jesuits, I read in completion in German because that book is also available in the German language. I published that on my channel time ago and for the moment I have only published 11 parts of the English reading, which will be, if it is completed with everything extra I did in there, 30 parts of the reading of, uh, of the book from uh, Edmond Paris that he published in 1975. And I go, yeah. ex I go explicitly <coughs> in some extras uh, during World War II, uh, explaining about the Ustashi, and I think Brett was uh, accompanying me when I when I read those, and it's yeah, still, I was it's a still sh sent shivers down my spine. Uh, you know, yeah. reading this article about this guy uh, when he wrote that article, how to become a, a, a human butcher. That's right. You remember that That's one? Right. Oh, I absolutely do, and I want to just. Uh, Thank you for doing that reading, Yerk, because uh, there's so few people in America here that have, including myself, by the way, that have the understanding of European life. And, you know, we've, we've left that a long time ago here in the United States, and we're just uh, kind of uh, struggling in ways that most Europeans are very aware of and and you know sometimes we get mockingly made fun of by Europeans it doesn't matter it's just that's the way the world works you know you just kind of get over it but um, in the same way Americans mockingly make fun of Europeans and I don't like it but uh, we got to come together and start looking at this as uh, as Bible believing born again Christians and we're not a part of these nations anymore. We are with Israel, and Israel has been divided and chopped up and dispersed for centuries. And we've been despised of all people. It's in the Bible. It's in all the the different prophets and in the in the uh, the law and the prophets, the Old Testament and the New Testament is just littered with all of the the atrocities and they continue to this day and they're not going to end they're just not going to end it's going to get much worse it's prophesied to get much worse and here we go amen 100 percent to all of that because the as we were talking before even offline when brett and i were talking is the history of the world 
is one of murder and mayhem, and Mm -hmm. if you would, it's genocide, genocide left and right, wherever you look, and it's about every 50, as we mentioned yesterday, it's about every 50 to 100 years, right in that time frame, is we have uh, a religious organization that goes on a mass murder spree, and I don't like to just call it a religion. Everyone knows that the uh, papal Rome is much more than a religion. It's got a religious side, yes, but it's got a financial side, it's got a geopolitical side, and really, and I like that term, it's a, it's a juggernaut. It crushes everything under its feet that when it gets rolling, it's like a steamroller, and again, we, we mentioned a bunch of examples of it, but they slaughtered uh, uh, the people, uh, the Hussites, they slaughtered the Waldensian Christians, they slaughtered the Albigensian Christians. Uh, it wasn't just, just uh, you know, Lutherans and that. It's throughout history. They've gone after Bible-believing Christians. And, uh, and it's, it's a sad thing to say, and I, and I grew up with a lot of, I still have a lot of Roman Catholic relatives, a lot of Roman Catholic friends. My dad was Roman Catholic. I was married to a Roman Catholic, so don't tell me, you know, I hate Catholics. No, I, I, I hate the hierarchical system that enslaves people, but certainly we, none of us here hate individual Roman Catholics. We hate the murder sprees that they, they go on, again, every 50 to 100 years. And we, history does indeed repeat itself, as Spanish-born American philosopher George Santayana said. Those who don't learn from uh, the lessons of history or learn the lessons of history repeat, repeat the mistakes. Of, yep, they repeat. Their, they're doomed to repeat yep. those mistakes. And we don't want to be <clears throat> repeating a genocide in that. And that's what we're basically, Tom Fress and Yerk and Brett and I, uh, and uh, um, I don't know exactly uh, what all Michael's doing, but the, the fact of the matter is that a lot of us have been trying to warn folks because we don't want to see a genocide. We don't want to see World War Three. We don't want to see a mass murder spree. We don't want to see another civil war in the, like the United States of America. We don't want to see Europe being overrun by Islamic terrorists and that. We don't want to see any of that. We want people to live in peace. And to live in peace, we have to, unfortunately, we have to expose the mass murderer that's in our midst. And unfortunately, that finger often, more often than not, points back at Papal Rome in whatever shape and form she's in, where she has power, uh, she crushes, again, all opposition under her feet. And we, we, again, as I said, we mentioned yesterday how uh, between, I think it was uh, 1641 and 1649, she, uh, 150,000 Protestants were murdered. And then we had uh, 250,000 uh, Protestants that were killed in what they call the Low Countries, and you know the um, thirty-year war, the thirty-year war between yeah. 1608 and 16, uh, 1618 and 1648, twelve million German were killed. Ugh. Yeah, they basically twelve million. That was that was more than uh, than one third of the complete population. You know, and Th- that, that is something Germany, nobody speaks yeah. about anymore. That's a long but time let, ago, too. Let me, let me just, uh, Daryl, I, I really love listening to you, and you say a lot of things, but here and there I just want to flip in a sure. little bit. You, you were saying that last piece with feet of iron, it, 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 um, it destroys all the things, and this is a papacy we, we are talking about. I'd like to go to the, uh, to, the, to the Bible because there's nothing that I love more but backing up what is said here in this broadcast with the Bible. So, before I do that, first and for all, I have a picture up here of my fourth YouTube channel that is up to this moment completely devoted to the work of Tom Fress in Inquisition Update. Playlists where he reads the book Romanism and the Reformation from Henry Gretton Guinness. Playlists where um, it is uh, Hour of the Truth meets Inquisition Update where we read a, read a book about um, preterism and futurism and the false doctrine that is in there. That's 14 videos and then a lot of videos on Inquisition Update he has here in his own uh, in his own playlist and now I, I also added a little bit of my own. But the point that I want to say is when you go uh, when you go to this channel, you can always find many videos of Tom Fress of Inquisition Update, very important to follow. That was one point that I wanted to make. And then, because you were speaking about this iron and, you know, how Rome tramples on everything, 
I just want to go to the Bible and I want to go to Daniel, um, the book of Daniel, chapter 7. And um, let us just have a little look into verse 7. After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, and you see that here in the picture in the video right away, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, it devoured and brake in pieces, that's the words that you use, Daryl, that's why I wanted to read this, it devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And we as Bible scholars know that Daniel here speaks of three um, kingdoms, the Heruli, the Ostrogoths, uh, the Visigoths, and the... Um, uh, and the uh, and the Vandals, those three uh, nations were plucked up by the roots and completely annihilated. There is nothing to be found again anymore today with them. And this is what Daniel already speaks about today, two thousand five hundred years ago. I remind you, yeah, before whom there were three of the first horns, so the first ten horns plucked up by the roots, and behold. In this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. And this is why I put the little picture of this little horn right here, and the ten characteristics of the little horn that you can read round about it. And there you will see wherever in Daniel this is mentioned, and you can see what how this little horn develops himself and that it arose out of the fourth beast, that it is among the ten horns, that it comes after the ten horns, that it is different from all the other horns, it has a look more stout than his fellows, it is uproot it has uprooted three kingdoms, the three kingdoms I just spoke about. He spoke great wonders against the Most High. He wore out the saints of the Most High, the Inquisition, the more than 50 million. We're just speaking about at least, if not many, many more. He thought to change times and laws. He abolishes the Sabbath. He makes his own calendar. And he gives us all a sun calendar instead of the biblical moon calendar. And we are all living in a quote-unquote heliocentric system instead of a stationary geocentric system where the earth is the center of the quote-unquote universe because God when he made the heaven and the earth he didn't start somewhere out on the back on the left side or whatever he started from the middle so the earth is the center of the quote-unquote universe we are important exactly that what the devil doesn't want you to know with his evolution theory telling you that we are billions of years old and some little dot somewhere in the universe so unimportant. No, we are very much important. So important even that our creator wrote a whole book about it. And it rained for a time, times and the dividing of time, the time of the 1260 years I spoke about late, uh, earlier on. So I, I, I very much appreciate, uh, Daryl, every word that you said. But here and there, I think it is very important that we... Um, give the biblical source of what you are saying, which I just did with this reading of Daniel chapter nine, uh, chapter 7, these few verses. And um, I very much appreciate you all listening to me. But, um, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. no, that, uh, you're 100% right. The most important thing that any of us can put out, yeah, we can talk about history and all that kind of stuff, and that's neat to know true history. But there is absolutely nothing, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Nothing is more important than God's Word, and that should be our main focus, is God's Word, because God's Word tells us about future events coming. God's Word tells us about true history, and if we'll get our noses into our Bibles and study, again, both Old and New Testament, they complement each other, we need to really, really, really study the Bible. So, no, Yerk, this, this is critical, anything you bring up w about the Bible that is the most important thing that we can bring to anybody that's that's listening and or watching on YouTube or anything. That's the most important thing is the Bible, because that's God's manual for the human soul, 
And it's also, like I said, it's got a lot of true history in it, and it tells us about the history of ancient kingdoms, and it tells us about about the what's going to be coming in the future. And uh, yeah, the Book of Revelation is is very important to read. The Book of Daniel, and uh, and I just so so honored and and privileged to be on with with you folks. You folks had do, have done so much in reading good books and that and bringing in the Bible with it. Uh, that you, I just I, as a matter of fact, you kept me up late last night, Yerk, because I <laughs> I just started watching your. Simon Magus versus Simon Peter, and I'm getting so much, and I've read quite a bit of history, and I'm I'm learning a lot of new stuff. So, Wonderful. folks, uh, go up there, go up there and watch on uh, YouTube. There, you just type in Simon Magus versus Simon Peter, and you're going to find out a whole, you're going to get a lot of great information there. I just urge everyone to go up and watch that series, and then you'll just find out about how. Uh, false religion really got a big kickoff from this Simon Magus guy who was a sorcerer, and he's he's mentioned in the Bible, but not by the name Magus. He's Simon the Sorcerer, and he fooled people with his sorceries. And this is important information to know. And mm. and so again, Comment. I can't com- I can't commend you guys enough that you're putting out that type of material. Uh, just pe- everyone needs to listen to that series. Yeah, I just want to make a quick comment, you guys, and just say, you know, uh, dear listener, don't think that we're trying to pump each other up or anything here. We are dealing with something very serious. And what this is, is that we have been neglected in, as the body of Christ, and we're starting to come to terms with reality. And that reality is is that we've been singled out and we have not been allowed true history. And we have to seek that out as individuals. That means independent of anyone. And to find uh, a, a few people that actually believe the same thing is extraordinarily rare, but it also requires checks and balances, and they're all in the Bible. Yes, the Bible is our manual. It is our source for pure learning. Pure Bible learning is the truth. And that's it. And it's not to pump each other up, it's to keep the body of Christ in check. So I implore anyone listening to really start getting a grasp on this, because you'll find that there is very, very few sources of information on the internet that are as well refined as, say, Tom Fress, Inquisition Update. Let's start with Tom. He's been doing this for how many years? Well, on First Amendment Radio, at least, I guess, uh, at the end of 2008, beginning of 2009, he started. So that's 10 years for now. Well, that's just the broadcast. But how about his studies? He's been studying his whole life. That's already already sometimes longer. And Daryl even replaced Tom Fress sometimes when he was... That's uh, right. When he did something else, then even Daryl took over the broadcast on Liberty Radio Live, it was at that time. And took and over the broadcasts of um, Tom Fress. And if you are interested in those broadcasts, you just have to go to the um, to the website of First Amendment Radio. I don't have that handy right here, right now. Um, right. On the right, internet. But we got to give credit where credit is due, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you have a YouTube channel of First Amendment Radio where all the new work of Tom Fress is uploaded already since a few years. And one of the most profound works still, and that is something that I also have on my Vimeo channel, oh, yes. 99 mm-hmm. parts of this book reading, The Global mm. Vatican. And I don't even know if Daryl is familiar with that. Ooh, yeah. Oh, They're yeah, that's nice. the one by the Knight of Malta guy. Yeah. By uh, Francis Rooney, Rooney, yeah. Francis Rooney. Rooney, yep, yeah. I have the book. I have the book, and, and we can also point out, and again, we're not trying to puff and fluff each other. The, the fact of the matter is it's tr- important to get truth out to people, and there's a lot of the misinformation, disinformation in that, and we've talked about that uh, amongst ourselves, that's out there trying to fool people. They'll give you some truth, but they'll mix in 10%, oh, yes. 15% error and that, and you have to, we have to be very careful because they're trying to discredit people, uh, they're trying to fool people, they're trying to trick people, 
And that's the name of the game is deception, and the Bible warns us about deception. But Tom Fress was out there even long before YouTube and all that stuff came along. Mm -hmm. Tom was broadcasting on amateur radio. That's right. And I believe he still does. So we've had people out there that have been trying to get the information out, and it's great that you know, you read books by F. Tupper Saucy with Rulers of Evil, um, Edmund Paris's book. There's a, a lot of books have been written by people who have courageously exposed Papal Rome's stranglehold on the United States of America, for one thing, but also Papal Rome's history of mass murder, Papal Rome's history of, of hating the Bible, any true Bibles, but especially in English, the King James Bible, this is that's one of the biggest longest running wars in history is and it's been brought out by a number yes, of people like right. Chris Pinto and his videos of how they have tried to discredit the King James Bible and the yeah. true Greek manuscripts his of, lamp the of the Dark Receptor. series, right? His lamp and the, the dark series his lamp and the dark series yes. from Chris Pinto. Oh yeah, fantastic. He's got four three videos, different videos I think, uh, for the moment are, are up on there of uh, a lamp and the dark all different parts and that's an the, the the first one he came out with is one of the best i've ever seen absolutely yeah. ex- yep agreed exposing the jesuits go ahead man no the, the, that's just a wonderful point that you're making there chris pinto i mean chris pinto also has a, a lot of flaws in his biblical teaching let me tell you that right away uh but on the other hand um he has done a very wonderful series with the lamp and the dark series he has done a uh, v- wonderful video with riddles in stone uh the um uh, the forgotten uh, what was it called the faith of um what what's it called brett help me there the oh f- the faith of our founding fathers the f- yeah uh, or called- something like that is it yeah he's got a thing on georgia guidestones yeah. he's got a lot of 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 uh Good audios and that he's got good audios exposing the Jesuits. A Dullum, a Dullum Films, it's uh, is this company called? So when yeah. you set yes. up on the internet, just go to a Dullum Films and look up Chris Pinto and um, the Hidden Face of Our Founding Fathers. That's the name that's of the it. of the that's one. It. And then Riddles in Stone also, and of course A Lamp in the Dark, which is the very first part, is absolutely breathtaking. And then you have the second part, uh, A Lamp in the Dark, Enter the Jesuits, um, where he, of course, exposes everything that Daryl has been saying about the forgerized Bible. Uh, you, uh, we all know that is something the Jesuits have been prepared already a long time ago, because let us just go a little bit back into history. In 1605, we have had the gunpowder plot by the Jesuits. That was the culmination of their trying to get... Uh, Protestant England back under the wings of Rome uh, after the Elizabethan uh, reigning time with the Babington plot they tried to kill her numerous times they sent the Spanish Armada and one of the last things they did was by Henry Garnett organizing the gunpowder plot of which Guy Fawkes was the uh, executor who was then caught and they wanted to blow up with 36 gun uh, with 36 barrels of gunpowder the whole Parliament uh, the whole family, the whole royal family, and everyone in the parliament to make sure that uh, Protestantism from the government of the uh, of the United Kingdom or England at that time is completely rooted out. And uh, with that gunpowder plot, that was one of the last actions they did over there. But they did a lot of other actions, like um, the assassination of Abraham Lincoln over there in the United States of America. They did another uh, many, many assassinations over here in Europe, uh, killing all these people. And uh, you know, all all this is. Uh, I, I I lost my train of thought. What I wanted to say uh, eventually about this um, gunpowder plot, because this is this is very important to understand that the Jesuits have always been working in the uh, in the shadows of doing that and that is what Chris Pinto of course um, analyzes in his in his movies A Lamp in the Dark uh, especially I think the the second part where he also goes into the gunpowder plot and Brett and I also went extensively on that when we were reading the book by um, P.D. Stewart uh, Code Word Babylon Right. I think we did four broadcasts on the gunpowder plot, especially with the confessions of Henry Garnett and all that stuff. Very, very interesting and, and really going we deep into it. We could have done that. many more, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's and, right. Uh, of course, as, as both of you are aware, I'm sure, 
is what they couldn't succeed th- through uh, armaments and, uh, uh, they, of course, they wanted to land a bunch of uh, Roman Catholic Spanish troops uh, with that Spanish armada, and they wanted, to, like you said, to bring England back. What they failed to do through force of arms, they succeeded in doing by infiltration and that, like the Oxford movement. That's what I wanted John to Henry, say. Thank Cardinal you. Newman. Yeah, yep. that's, that's where I lost my train of thought. That's right. So that all culminated then in the 1829 um, Emancipation Act. And from that Emancipation Act afterwards, you got the Oxford Movement. And out of that Oxford Movement came the whole movement of forgerizing the Bibles. And in 1887, uh, I think, or 1885, the first forgerized Bible came out. The point was, the Jesuits were running they they were in a race with the Protestants about uh, publishing a Bible. And their douay Rheims Bible, the pure Jesuit Bible, douay Rheims version, was published first in 1609, two years prior to the King James Bible. But the King James Bible, of course, washed it all away. I mean, no Protestant ever <laughs> would change the King James for the douay Rheims. But they came a little earlier. They came two years early. In 1609, they published that. And in 1611, King James published that. And the point about the gunpowder plot is, if that gunpowder plot would have been successful, we would not hold in our hands today the 1611 King James Bible. And that is the providence of God that we see. That is where we see God intervening for his people, for his church here on earth. So please, pick up your Bible. If yep. God is so gracefully to you for you to you to give it, pick it up and read it and understand it and don't always question it. But measure everything that is written on the Bible on history, because that's what prophecy is for. Prophecy is history written in advance. And we today in 2018 have the possibility to look back at all the history and see all the prophecies being fulfilled. And when you measure it on the correct Bible, and therefore you need the King James, because if you use the ISV, the ESV, the RSV, the NASB, um, the New Living Translation, the Good Hope Bible, the Mormon, I don't know, all these forgerized Bibles, they are all based on Gnostic text out of Alexandria, the Codex Sinaiticus, the Nestle Alant texts, and they don't have the true Masoretic text of the uh, of the. Old Testament and the Textus Receptus coming from Antioch in Greek, the unforgerized original text that we know today as the Textus Receptus. And it is so easy to deceive you. And the Bible says, God says, this, don't let any man deceive you. He says it numerous times in the New Testament. So don't believe man, believe God. And therefore, pick up his word. The 1611 King James Bible is the only true Bible available today in the English language. Pick that one up and measure everything that you study in this world, in history, when you read books like the authors that Daryl mentioned and many others, because if I let Daryl go here for 15 minutes, he will mention book after book after book after book. I know that because I listened to him on First Amendment Radio. He didn't do anything else. Take out a pencil and take down the names of the books and the authors and he gives you even telephone numbers and website where you can get them. Read all that stuff and measure everything you read in there on the Bible. And if it fits, if that what these books say confirm what God has said first, then really embrace these books and make sure that other people get the way to the knowledge of those books. But measure everything against the Bible. That is something that Brett does. That is something that Michael does. That is something that Daryl does here. We measure everything that we read on the Bible because the Bible is our foundation of truth. The Bible is our foundation for our conscience. And we cannot speak against the Bible. We cannot speak against the Word of God. So everything that we say has to be in accordance with it. And every author that we read has to be in accordance with the Bible. Otherwise, he's worthless. Do your own studies. First and for all, read your Bible. 100% amen to that. And we need to always keep in mind the cost that it took to get those Bibles to us. 
William Tyndale wasn't the only one that was murdered who was trying to get Bibles printed, Stop distributed, the and that. Yeah, but what they had... Tyndall was strangled, of course, and burnt his but dead body supposedly burned at the stake. Yeah, 20 I miles say, from supposedly, where I live, Daryl. Did you know that? In right, Wilwater, yeah. In Wilwater, in Brussels. That's 20 miles from where I live here in, in Belgium. Uh, yeah. I think he was in prison for like 16 months, and we need to think that in mind. Also, people like John Bunyan was in prison, but a lot of people that were trying to get biblical truth out to people have paid with their very lives. So... Should we have a King James Bible just sitting on our coffee table and never read it? No. Think of the cost of the people that that translated it, that distributed it, that printed it, that were murdered simply for doing that, or for even possessing a Bible that they were murdered in. And if we neglect it, those are God's, like I said, it's the operating manual uh, for the human soul. We we can't ignore the Bible except at our own at a great risk to our souls, to our even our physical being. That it just costs people so much. That's a good Not point that you again. are making there, Daryl. Sorry to interrupt you, but that's a good point that you are making. I mean nobody would dare step in the Boeing seven two seven and try to fly that stuff without a manual. But everybody is going to lead his life without reading the manual that God gives him. Because that's what the Bible is. It's our manual through this life. Yeah, 100%. I mean, the Bible just has so much wisdom, and that it's, it's, it's actually, if I can phrase it this way, it's stupid to ignore something that can help you so much with everything in your life, whether it's, it's uh, a marriage, whether it's raising your children. God gives the instructions on how to do all of that, And if, if I can also use a military example, God's Bible helps us to get through the minefields of life. It really does. There's a lot of minefields that the devil has strewn, just like he strewed, has strawed tares and stuff amongst the wheat. He has put a lot of mines, like landmines, in front of us that he wants us to be crippled or, or, or murdered, killed, Uh, our souls to be destroyed, and again, ignoring the Bible is just, it's really stupid, because it's, you know, it's going to point us not only to heaven, but it's going to show us how to live our lives on, on earth, how to, our relationship with others, Ooh, not just comments. our own families. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just thinking, ignoring the Bible, just think of those who actually not only ignore it, but actually change it. It's right in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. You get your name taken out of the book of life. Yeah, we're not to add or subtract. Gee, good job there, buddy. You just got your name taken out of the book of life, and now you're leading the whole world right into the pit. That's yeah. what's coming for these people. And I know some of these people. I'm ashamed of it. Yeah, that's both Old and New Testament. Uh, Deuteronomy 4, 2, ye shall not add to the word. You were not going to add or diminish aught from God's word. And, of course, those are the people uh, Revelation. that need rebuke. They need to be cast out. They need to be kicked to the curb in the body of Christ. And they need to be exposed, and we need to point them out. Yeah, we can't. Anybody that puts the word of God down... Um, tries to promote paraphrases, uh, promote uh, versions of the Bible that are, especially that have their New Testaments based on two to five corrupt, and they're basically the Roman Catholic manuscripts, the Alexandrian, the Sinaiticus, and the Vaticanus, etc. Um, it just, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's cutting up God's Word. It's just like back in the, the Old Testament, the one uh, king Uh, was it Jehoiakim or something that was taking a knife and is a pen knife and he was cutting up uh, the mm -hmm. stuff that the prophet had done and he's tossing it into the fire? That's what they're doing when they come out with these newer versions based on again the New Testament translation based on these two to five corrupt Roman Catholic manuscripts. They're they're taking away from God's word. They're just like that king, that wicked king that was cutting it up the manuscript and tossing it in the fire 
to heat his home in the winter there uh we just need to we just need to really back and promote those people that are promoting the true bible and are putting out like david w daniels i think is one of the real heroes of the faith for standing up for the king james bible he's got youtube videos left and right up on out there he's got he's written probably about five different books about that that particular subject alone is uh, exposing the corrupt manuscripts and that so yeah praise god that there's there's people out there that are defending god's true word in the english language and that is the old 1611 king james bible and to to buy any other bible you're just you're just you're taking a chance with your own very soul but you're also you you're just missing out on so much of god's truth because like i said it applies in all areas of our lives and None of us is going to operate operate a piece of, and I like one of you guys brought this out. We're not going to operate a, an expensive piece of equipment, whether it's computer, a computer. We're not going to a, a backhoe or something or a well dr- uh, drilling piece of equipment that's you know worth tens or, or no hundreds of thousands of dollars or something. We're not going to operate it without looking at the manual. Uh, who in his right mind wants to operate? his human soul based on not reading the manual for it. And that's what the Bible is. The Bible is the operating manual for the human soul. And to ignore it is, is to just risk your soul and uh, your, your just, your, just your health, your regular health and everything else. You, you just risk in everything. And what would a man, as it says in Matthew, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? What are you gonna What are you gonna offer up for that if 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 you forfeit your soul? So I think, guys, it's it's so important that we do. Number one thing we're going to promote is is the Bible, mm-hmm. the true Bible, mm-hmm. and that is so important. The true Bible and the true history that's been taken away. Yeah, and then and we we pointed out in the, the the previous broadcast. If you think of the the Jesuits. Uh, that came along. You think of them as a uh, like the Empire State Building turned into a giant pencil with a giant eraser on it. That's what these guys are. They've gone through history and they just erase out anything that's negative to papal Rome. What's the main purpose of the Jesuits? The main purpose of the Jesuits is to number one destroy the the effects of the Counter Reformation of the Reformation through their Counter Reformation. There we go. And also, and also. What what's the other main object? It's to destroy and uh, the discredit the Bible, etc. And it's to erase any history that was negative to papal Rome because they want to consolidate a new world order under with a one world religion, a one world financial system, a one world geopolitical system that's under the titular head of the white pope, which is run by the black pope in the. Si- background but now we have a white pope that is a black pope so and they do this in- sorry I, inter- i have to interrupt there because with the learning yeah. you're saying something very profound and that is um, what tapa saucy goes in into um, into the beginning chapters in his wonderful book uh rulers of evil that he published in the end of the 1990s uh, of, of uh, so of last century um he goes into the ratio studiorum which is the learning against learning, the Medici learn method. That is, learning against learning means lear- the Gnostic learning hold against the biblical learning. They totally diminish the value of the learning out of the Word of God, the Bible, and they absolutely promote nothing else but Gnostic learning. And that's how we come to all these, and I call it pseudoscience, that we are faced with today all over the world, all the learning institutions all over the world. I mean, you guys in America, you have in, in your in your nation alone 28 Jesuit-led universities and more than 50 Jesuit high schools. Okay, and Tapa Saucy made that point in uh, in one of his um, in uh, one of his chapters in the book Rulers of Evil, where he states that in uh, 1904. I, I, I don't get the numbers anymore. In 1904, 90% of the American colleges had a um, 
a man, uh, mandatory uh, history, history course in 1939 that were only 50 percent as much as in 1964 um, and so 1914 that was 1914, 1939, 1964 and in 1960, 1996 the time of the publishing of his book Rules of Evil only one out of 50 schools had a mandatory history course the time is maybe to come Tapas Horsey said almost prophetically that only people who keep themselves busy in their spare time amateur historians will study history and that is the goal of the Jesuits, not only to keep people away from studying history, but also when they give them history to study, they give them a false history. They are the writers of all the curriculum books, of all the books in all the schools and universities all over the world. And if anything in that book ever would come out that puts the Roman Catholic Church or the Jesuits in a bad light, they just prevent this book from being published. So they make sure that you don't have access to the truth. And that again is another point to the Bible. To the real Bible, to the true Bible, the only true Bible preserved in the English language today, the 1611 King James Bible. When you measure everything against that, you will see, sorry, you will see the deception. Otherwise you don't even stand the chance of seeing that deception and you will be caught in this theater of the ratio studiorum and you will be like a flip like a ball in a flipper you will be uh, you will be shut to the right corner you will be shut to the left corner you will be shut up you will be shut down but you don't have a clue what it's all about anymore because they play you like a ball in a pinball machine yeah and that's the big problem and you First have to understand that and then get the Bible to understand that. So now, Daryl has spoken a lot, uh, I have spoken a lot, Brett has spoken a little, I haven't even heard Michael. Are you there, brother? <laughs> One may only learn by listening. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I have two ears and one mouth. <laughs> so Yurk and I are kind of at a disadvantage then because we're both kind of uh, motor mouthing along here. <laughs> That's yeah, but just fine. We, we listen when we study uh, off the microphone, Daryl, and then we're going to study uh, our true. books and all that stuff. So, And then we just bring it to the mic and try to share that with other people. But I know that, you know, Michael is that guy. He sits there for an hour, shutting up, not saying a word. And then all of a sudden you give him the microphone and then he comes up with a lot of interesting points. So that's why I just wanted to give him the mic for a moment. Please, Michael. Sure. Yeah, okay. So, Daryl, thank you very much for being with us today. And, my my uh, I'm, pleasure. I'm, I'm very glad uh, that you could make it. And I think uh, uh, beside your, your health issues, your mindset is quite right. And I think that's uh, far more important because uh, you see that uh, the other issues may be getting better but I think to have uh, to be mentally in the right spirit is a gift which uh, not many people can share with you. And um, let me tell you that I am. I was very glad that I could uh, learn a lot. I, I I would, however, would wish that we uh, would have gotten into the um, John F. Kennedy uh, murder. Oh, we will. <laughs> but I, we will. Oh, we we will. will in the in the in the near future. Yeah. Um, but I would like to share my screen uh, soon because um, okay. I think that I think that uh, the Almighty has uh, made up some or left us some hints uh, these days. Okay, share your um, screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't don't rush. <laughs> 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 um, so um, you see that. Uh, there are some phrases, some uh, quotes in the King, Jim King James Bible, which I would like to quote. And uh, then I would like to share my screen and also my conclusion, and then you can make up for yourself what you may take out of it. And so I'm quoting from Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, which sp speaks 
And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. I think we are, all that we are gathered here today, are quite familiar with this verse. Uh, I like to, to put your attention to the point that he was cast out into the earth. That's why I would like to, to share my screen the first time, which I do now. Just a second. So, I hope you can see anything. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. It takes a uh, minute. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm sharing a screen out, uh, taken out from Google Earth. Google Earth has been founded on June the 11th in 2001. So, it's a quite new media. Which you, can use by, yeah, which you can use by uh, having the quite uh, software from Google Earth, which is uh, free, of, free of charge on your computer. And so I found this on, a, on, a, on another website and I tracked it down and I tried it with my, o my own Google Earth version and there you go. Um, this is a close-up of a certain coordinates on the, on the Earth below uh, or between South America and the Antarctica. And if you look closely and if you got your mind in the right mindset, you might discover it, which was uh, why I'm referring this picture to the quote, uh, he was cast out into the Earth. Be because um, if you look closely or maybe from a distance, if you wear glasses, <laughs> which I don't know, um, then you can make up that there is uh, quite a dragon um, displayed here with his eyes on the on the middle of the screen. I, I don't know, Daryl, if you can... can uh, no, follow. I'm on just on the telephone. Ah, <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Daryl okay. will but, see as soon as my video is put up of this. But, that's um, right. Ah, I, okay, I see okay. this. And, and you can, you can okay. go with your mouse on the, uh, on the eyes. I see them, but... You can go there yeah. with your mouse and uh, with your mouse and yeah. uh, show the yeah. people. Yeah. I yeah. know that These picture. The, yeah, I know that picture. The left Long eye time. and the right eye. Yep, you and got now, it. In addition to that, I would like to share another uh, screen um, because I also thought about that um, uh, that picture a long time ago, and I thought, well, if that could be true. That there are some some hints here, some some things which we can only, um, yeah, develop in the in the so-called last days, where we have the chance to to look from the outside on for the, for things. And now in the modern so-called modern age, then there is an is another thing I would like to share. And uh, I just have to look if on it and. Uh, I'm referring to, to Daniel, uh, second chapter, which uh, the uh, prophecy of the metal man has been uh, published. And you see that, uh, I'm, I'm just, just looking at it, it's the second, yeah, it's the second, second uh, chapter, 20, uh, verse 20, 31. <clears throat> 41. Yeah. And so then when Daniel, Daniel was revealing uh, the vision of Nebuchadnezzar in the second book of Daniel, verse 41, he says, And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. So, as I have uh, carefully listened to your um, comments and your um, of today, I know that the metal man consists of four kingdoms, and the last kingdoms shall be Rome. And the last kingdoms is displayed with the uh, with the feet. Okay. That's, uh, I think that's, uh, we all agree on that. Mm -hmm. And and now <laughs> I would like to share the screen because uh, I, I tell you now where, uh, what, what could be an equivalent to this prophecy. Because uh, you see that also from this metal man, of course, the Roman 
empire, the Roman Catholic Church, um, is displayed with the legs and the feet of mixed clay and iron. So, and there you go. That's the map of Italy. And the map of Italy is commonly known as we, we say, we, we learned in, in a school for, uh, it, it, it more, it's more easily to suggest uh, how Italy looks on the map. It's like boots. Yeah, because you have the boots, uh, which reminds you of the, um, of, of, of the land Italy. And so, wherefore you, do you need boots? boots? Of course, you need boots for a foot and a leg. And so, I, for me, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a, a mixture of, of, of uh, silly thought and a mixture of, uh, I, I, cannot, I, cannot, I cannot express my, uh, my astonishment more than uh, to, show this, uh, to, to show my, share my screen and to show this image to you guys, because I think, well, this could be another hint from our almighty God. And that's my closing comments today. These boots are made for walking. <laughs> <laughs> that's Nancy that's Sinatra. That's what Nancy Sinatra, Sinatra. Sinatra, yeah. I know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, it's it's nice that you shared that <laughs> anyway. Stomping <laughs> stomping like that beast we were talking about earlier in chapter seven, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing that's that with amazing. us. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I haven't right. I haven't I haven't I haven't seen this connection in anywhere. That's fantastic, you guys. Well, it's been uh, a wonderful meeting that we have had today, but I have to cut it short a little bit because I have to go and uh, I have another uh, session of uh, reading Romanism and the Reformation in German this evening. And if I'm fit enough, I will even do two hours. So for the moment, I have to uh, leave this broadcast here. Uh, thank you very much, Daryl, for taking out the time. Thank you very much, Brett, for taking out the time and the money that we could call Daryl and uh, that we could have him on the phone. And I hope that very soon all the problems will be solved, oh. that he can install Skype and that we can talk for hours more and get much more of this information that we spoke about today and all the other stuff we want to share with the listeners about the Jesuit order, about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, about the assassination of JF Kennedy, about the true foundings of the United States of America. Um, maybe Daryl doesn't even know that book. Do you know the book, Daryl, um, The Ark and the Dove by J. Moss Ives? I've heard of it, um, okay. and I think John Daniel was really pushing that book. Yeah, he did. John, he, he pushed that on Tom Fress in the Inquisition oh, Update in the time. Yes. And Tom Fress read that book in the beginning of 2010. And I know that Brett has the complete archive, so he can send you via email, via retransfer, um, uh, if he wants to, uh, the audios mm -hmm. of that book, and especially the last, uh, the last 20 readings or something, where he goes into book three, um, into the harvest. Um, that is so profound knowledge when you speak of rulers of evil and then uh, the book The Ark and the Dove by J. Moss Ives about the founding of the United States of, of America so that we all understand that that country is, for the shame that it is, okay, but it is the second beast of Revelation 13. We cannot keep ourselves busy always only with the identification of the first piece. We also have to see the second beast and the working together of those two, especially in the days that we are coming today. So I want to thank Daryl for being part of our uh, broadcast here today. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Brett. And um, I'll see you next time. And I can only close with the words that are so important. Study your Bible. Read your Bible. Read the 1611. King James Bible. Until next time, Maranatha.